Hi guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Corky commentary guide. So this time I've actually released the complete guide before the commentary guide, which is uh, something unusual over here on the channel. However, uh, the reason for that is that for the complete guide, the gameplay I used was of Corky AD Carry, which is my main role. And today for the commentary guide, we're going to be doing Corky Mid. So previously we had a case where I had to play uh, Janna support because I didn't. I got uh, auto filled to mid, and I swapped roles with my duo partner who is playing support, and and I I played support instead, and she played mid. So now this time I I, I am actually gonna follow up on the role that I was assigned. So I was assigned mid, so I thought this would be an, a good opportunity to play Corky, and here we are. So uh, as I mentioned in the complete guide for both Corky mid and AD carry the build as well as the rune setup is the same so check out the uh, Corky um, complete guide if you guys want to know more about the build and the runes as well as the spells for that matter so here uh, we are in a lane matchup against Ari so basically uh, Corky in both AD carry and as well as mid actually all you want to do is you want to scale up so here I'm pinging enemy missing because I see Ari roaming top true enough Ari does show up top so uh, one thing to note is Corky doesn't exactly have the best wave clear. I mean, he does have his uh, third and first ability, which is AOE, but you don't want to ever use your third ability to clear the wave unless you want to shove the wave and there's no enemies uh, nearby. Uh, but you can also use your first ability first ability to clear wave, but uh, Corky is very mana hungry. As you guys can see, I have a decent chunk of mana already gone. I've only used uh, maybe like three... Uh, uh, for three or four first abilities and here I use another one and my mana is going down to nearly half so here I managed to shove out the wave I see Rengar coming in to the jungle and I'm gonna help out now of course I am spotted on the the skull crab vision but here Rengar does really well I, I Valkyrie over to try to get him and he jumps over to the uh, Gromp with his passive and he does manage to uh, root me with his uh, enhanced E. So Rengar actually plays that situation really well. He, he, he lives on really low HP. If he played that any differently, I would have gotten the kill there. But there's honestly nothing I could have done there unless I wanted to commit my flash. But I was not confident that uh, at level 4 I could kill uh, Rengar. So I instead go for the safer play of just walking away and going back to farm my mid wave. Just collect my CS. So it's always, uh, you know, farming waves is, is a surefire way to just get a hit. Uh, you n you don't, especially as a scaling champion like Corky, you never really want to risk uh, dying to Rengar, although it's a lot more likely you'll pick up the kill. Uh, personally, that's what I think, so I did not choose to, uh, to take the fight there. Instead, uh, you know, I just back off. So now, honestly, after uh, these two games that I've played, I'm, I'm kind of considering if I should go from a mana immune Corky instead of a Triforce Corky, because... Um, I find myself running out of mana very often, especially in this game. Uh, I'll point it out later, but I actually run out of mana in 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 uh, whilst I'm in the team fight, which is of course not a place that you want to be as a caster kind of champion. So uh, maybe I, I will maybe be testing out the mana mune build and seeing how it goes. But for now, I still recommend the Triforce build just because of how much earlier earlier you hit your power spike. Uh, it takes really long to skill with the mana mune build. With Corky, the moment you get your Triforce, it's your first uh, major power spike of the game already. So here, uh, just warding. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be doing a video uh, sooner or later uh, on vision and warding. But this, this is one of the ward spots that I actually like. Because it's not in the bush, but it does cover uh, the jungle entrance from the enemy side as well as my side as well as a little bit uh, towards the dragon area so I do like this ward sort of in between the the pixel brush as well as the main brush so Cork, uh, uh, Ari sorry is clearly uh, you know roaming down she's just actually getting dragon vision but uh, as I mentioned in the Corky uh, complete guide the moment dragon spawns at four minutes you want to be backing to pick up your package because mo normally most teams will fight over dragon um, more or less immediately as uh, on its first spawn uh, in general. So of course I hear I'm pinging, uh, um, pinging that Ari is missing again because Ari is clearly hitting them but uh, she spotted on the ward that I put down just now and I'm going to match her roam. So now our wave state is even because we each have 4 minions so both of us are going to lose out on equal minions which allows me to roam here. I, I get a nice push onto the Ari but Ari you know she has her spirit rush and she gets up because of that. I flash forward to get in range to kill um, the Rengar because you know Corky has really low range 
So here Shivana is going to be starting up the dragon without the enemy jungler. This is an okay move. It is true that the entire enemy team is in the area, but the enemy team doesn't have a jungle. As long as we don't all die here, it should be fine. Here I'm just you know walk trying to walk away, not be the main target here. Here you know I I basically run out of HP and and everything, so I I pretty much just die, and you know the enemy gets a triple kill, which is definitely not where we want to be. So Dragon it has actually reset, and here uh, um, Seraphine as well as the uh, Akali is coming in to clean up the fight. So thankfully we do uh, salvage some kills in the fight, which is not the worst so no and we didn't give over the dragon to the enemy team which is probably the most important part uh, of course it is a an uh, ocean dragon which is really important for the regen so here I have actually picked up Triforce and Boots and I'm 1-1-1 one, one, and one. I'm not the worst on Corky in the early game if uh, you are choosing between uh, killing and dying or just you know not getting anything you always uh, trading kills is always worth so here, I actually do get uh, Hextech Ultimatum by Camille, but thankfully my entire team, uh, Camille is basically in between me and my entire team, so uh, it still all goes good, and pretty much my team wins out on this team fight uh, after securing the dragon. Here I get hit by Ari's Charm, uh, because of that I die, so if I didn't get hit by Ari's Charm, uh, I would have lived there, but you know, unfortunately Ari's Charm is her most important part of her kit to hit, and I did not dodge it, so I am dead there. So here I'm 3-2-3, uh, three, three. so to my point just now, uh, as an early game Corky, if you can trade your life for a kill, it's worth it. But uh, uh, back to my previous example of the Rengar fight in the jungle, just now, I was not confident of, of uh, taking down Rengar you know, because of the uh, fact that Rengar at the moment is extremely broken, he got hot fix uh, patch. This was about a day. This was a day before the hot fix, so he was still really broken at this point in time. And the jungle has a lot of bushes for him to use to to kill me. So I would I wouldn't be surprised to be very honest if uh, you know he howls, heals heals up a, a little bit of HP, and then he just kills me hundred to zero. I wouldn't be surprised with how broken Rengar is. So I didn't want to risk just dying for nothing and not getting a kill. But in these two, last two fights, I did pick up kills and then died after that. And as a Corky, that is okay because uh, Corky really needs to uh, needs kills to scale into the scale into late game uh, faster. And you know I'm playing Corky as mid, not a carry, so it's not absolutely crucial. It's not absolutely crucial that I stay alive. Of course, you never want to be dying on purpose, but. Um, I think that uh, trading a, a kill for a death on Karki is worth uh, in the early stages of the game. Of course, in the late game, where you have you know all your items and you are carry, uh, the carry of your team, one of the carries at least of your team, uh, of course you don't want to be uh, trading uh, kills at that point in the game. But for now, it's uh, still alright. So here, my entire team is grouping at bot, and Akali is holding down mid. So we are actually we were trying to actually get a pick or push out bot, but we're not actually gonna get anything out of it. So I'm just gonna recall uh, for mana as well as the package. So uh, in the meantime, uh, a fight breaks out the moment I am gone, both in the mid lane as well as in the bot lane. So here, uh, Zaya becomes godlike. That is, uh, you know, that is an issue. So we're gonna have to target the Zaya here. Uh, uh, Shivana dies. So pretty much my entire team is dead except for me. So. Here I'm gonna have to go in on the Ari to at least trade back a kill. Of course, that's not a positive trade for my team, but uh, you know, package for a kill is of course worth. And there is no major objectives on the map now that I can use my package for. So here, uh, I put a ward in the bush to spot out the Rengar because I, I did see him uh, roam upwards towards me. Of course, I'm the only target left on the map, so logically he would be coming for me. So I do put a ward there to spot uh, spot spot out his roam, uh, which is really good. So I don't overstep and just die to the Rengar. So here I've picked up my static shift. Of course, your second major power spike is Corky. Your power spikes are basically every time you, you complete an item and every time you get your package. Uh, pretty pretty easy, pretty simple. So here I'm just gonna clear out mid wave with the help of Seraphine. And here, uh, just we're just gonna be poking because uh, Corky skills do have a decent amount of range. Here, of course, I'm gonna be focusing the Zaya. I hit a huge shutdown. I get. Uh, 875 gold from the Zaya shutdown. So Zaya, you know, she was really, really fed. Now she's 822, but who knows how much shutdown gold she had on her. But you know, I get a huge amount of that shutdown gold, and we put the Harrow mid to try to secure the mid tower. Unfortunately, I get hit by a charm again, and I die. So pretty much, you know, when I die, it's just because of the charm. Sh uh, Shivara tries to out, out out of the hex tech ultimatum, which 
Of course, it does not work. When you're trapped in there, nothing is going to get you out, except for Camille stepping out of it herself. So, Shivara, that doesn't work. Now, she might have done it in panic, uh, but, uh, you know, still not, the good, not a very good look on her. Here, the enemy team is possibly going for Dragon, and they are. So here, uh, my team, of course, trying to you know, poke them out as they're doing Dragon. A really nice uh, Seraphine E. And Jin is gonna ult here to try to pick up some kills. Now, I have revived, but I'm just gonna stay on here because nothing interesting uh, about me walking to the Dragon Pit. So here, I'm gonna try to secure the Dragon, and I get the Dragon as well as... I do get the kill on the Ari. Actually, yes, I do get the kill on the Ari, and I get the dragon. So of course, the important part is the is the infernal dragon steal. So now my team ha actually has the two most important dragons, which is the infernal and as well as the ocean dragon. And the enemy team is at, at this point in time, my team has finally got a hit of the enemy team. But my my team was actually behind the enemy team for the majority of the time. Camille flashes, and I flash after her. But then I realized I'm not going to be catching her, so pretty much wasted my flash there. Uh, could have just got the Camille flash and you know got gotten away, but you know I commit my flash as well, uh, cause I thought I could get the kill, but nope. Allies I am six three three now, pretty fat, and I have actually gone for an early Zanyas, as you guys can see. After static shift, I gone for Zanyas Hourglass. Reason being, there's a lot of people that can dive backline. Rengar can dive and one shot me, so I need Zanyas for that. Uh, I can get Hextech Ultimatum by Camille, so I need Zanyas for that. Uh, if I get hit by Ari Charm, Zanyas not really gonna help too much. But yeah, so here I'm just going into the package, splitting up the enemy team nice uh, into the Seraphine ultimate. Uh, you know, we don't actually pick up anything as of yet, but we're going to be going on to the chase. Akali going in, uh, nice route by the Seraphine onto the Galio. We pick up the Zaya as well. Rengar has to flash out. Uh, Ari has to flash out. And as usual for the umpteenth time in the game, I I try to no avail to chase them because I have no health. So if I go any further, I'll just die to the tower. So I realize that and I quickly back away. And uh, back to my Zanya's point, as well as Galio ultimate. So a lot of things that Zanya's will be really useful for. So we're gonna pick up the early Zanya's, and we're of course gonna build towards our next uh, item, uh, which should be the uh, Infinity Ditch, I believe. So here, I'm gonna try to pick up the Rit buff, but I I don't think the Shivana gives it over to me, even though the Shivana is not really doing well. At all. She's two and seven, but she smites the Rit buff away from me. Um, you know, who is three. Uh, 636 I believe and you know, Jin not doing the best as well but he does have 9 assists so he is actually having a pretty decent KP just not actually picking up the kills so here you know I'm just gonna clear out the Baron vision and we're gonna uh, see if we can pick anyone up on the roll actually the enemy team comes to the exact same spot as well I managed the Valkyrie all the way back so that Camille actually jumps basically jumps into the entire enemy team a really good Shivana ultimate to disrupt the entire team and I'm gonna be following up from the back line uh, with my 1 HP of course being very cautious not to step anywhere between Zaya and her feathers because it'll be really unfortunate if Zaya just presses E I happen to be in the path and I get killed by like the recall of like two feathers so here I'm of course I'm gonna be recalling for health and we do manage to get a clean ace on the enemy team so now at this point we were actually behind for a majority of the game, but at this point, after the last like two team fights, my team has actually gotten a 3k goal lead over the enemy team just because of you know just because of uh, removing them from the map and then farming up. After that, here another huge minion wave. I'm gonna be farming the minion wave, of course, and you know always always good to farm up the lanes. Uh, generally, when it gets to the later stages stages of the game, even when your team groups like after fights, uh, you should still be going out, out and farming the waves or pushing the waves, you know, because you always want to be picking up the goal uh, 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 that is provided by the minions. You don't want to just let it die to the tower, because if the enemy team picks up all the minion goal and you don't, you know, you're technically disadvantaging yourself, because the enemy team is getting a goalie from you off you not farming minions. Of course, the inverse is if you if the enemy team is dead and you manage to clear all the minions, their minions will die to the tower, which allows you to extend your lead. So here, I'm gonna pick up the package again and I'm pinging uh, for dragon. I have the package, and dragon is spawning soon. So this is prime time for a team fight where I have the package and where my team has the lead. So we can just go and force the dragon. So uh, Ari. Uh, catches out Seraphine unfortunately so we are put at a numbers disadvantage which is not uh, the best spot to be in however uh, the team is still pretty strong we don't like ward the uh, area around dragon we have also secured the, I have also secured the skull just now prior to recalling so the enemy team doesn't really have vision among the area we secure our third dragon of the game really important on a, a character like Shivana here I panic uh, 
package out as well, uh, much like what the um, Shivana tried to do just now. So here, I just panicked pa uh, package, but I, then I realized I can't get out of the Hextech Ultimatum with the package. Here, my entire team has evaporated, but I'm sort of cleaning up the fight. Gato lives on 1 HP. Or actually, uh, I think Shivana pick, uh, gets the kill. Yeah, Shivana gets the kill on the Galio, and I get a triple kill, uh, picking up the Rengar. Ari is down there. I don't want to go over there and get charmed by her in one combo, so I'm gonna let Shivana, you know, pick up the kill. So here we get another ace on the enemy team. Somehow we turn around the fight. Um, I would say it's just because I was staying in the back line and uh, outputting my damage. I was pretty much untouched for the majority of the fight until uh, the rest of my team died and the enemy team you know, was starting to focus on me but thankfully they, they used all their cooldowns on my team already so I was able to uh, more or less basic attack uh, plus weave in my spells in between with all the Triforce procs and uh, clean up the fight with the Shivana. So here the Shivana is nowhere near so I'm gonna finally be able to pick up the red buff uh, which will be very very useful for me from the burn and the slow. Uh, Shivana ma manages to pick up the tier 2 bot tower which is of course really really good and my team's lead is now increasing up to 7k so now the game is now in our favor don't want to overextend here uh, Rengar does it cut out and a really nice uh, Seraphine out in a choke point uh, we get a kill on the Zaya and as well as the Galio so enemy team is just crumbling apart they were doing really well at the beginning of the game uh, especially the Zaya but since then you know it's it's sort of been falling apart for them here I'm gonna go into uh, not really KS but I do do a decent amount of damage to the Camille but my team probably had that secured already but you know I come in just to to boost my KP just to get another kill and we're gonna go ahead and take their mid in hip and will this be the end of the game uh, of course we're gonna try to force down the base as well or are we? Nope, we're gonna back off. So we're not gonna, this is not the end of the game yet. We're just gonna back off. We're going to instead um, push top. There's a huge minion wave here for me to collect. I collect the huge minion wave. Uh, can't push top with one cannon minion. So Ari is there. I'm try I try to hit her. Jin tries to hit her. We both miss. Our next wave is coming in. So we're gonna siege this uh, top. In hip uh, Seraphine gets the root. Uh, whiffs the ultimate in the wrong direction though. Uh, so Ari does manage to escape for the time being. So here it looks like another uh, big team fight is about to break up. Jin gets engaged upon Jin dies and I'm gonna have to be doing the damage in this fight. I get the kill, uh, get two kills and the rest of the team is split up and Camille is trapping herself <laughs> in the Hextech ultimatum. Uh, Akali picks up the kill on the Ari and we're gonna just clean up the Seraphine. Uh, second phase of Akali out. Uh, Akali just cleans up the Camille and the enemy team is, is wiped out. They're aced, and we're just gonna pick up the kill. So, uh, one thing I would really like to point out as we slowly move into the stats is how uh, technically we have two 80 carries with me and Jin, or two marksmen at least, may not necessarily be 80 carry. However, Jin was spending way too much time dying. As you can see, he's 1713. He does have a decent. I, actually, I wouldn't even say he's decent. He does have an okay KP of 14, but he is dying way too many times. He, like He's, he's uh, always out of position and he's getting removed from the fight at the start. So you basically are left with an AD carry. So I'm the like backup AD carry because I'm not actually playing AD carry. I'm the backup AD carry, but I end up you know carrying the majority of the team fights, particularly those uh, later game team fights. So as you guys can see, uh, my, my entire team does well. I get the MVP with the S. Uh, uh, Shivana and Seraphine also pick up an S and Akali picks up an A so we all do really well so um, I also get the most uh, most goal, most kills, most minions uh, highest KP, a triple kill as well as the highest champion damage which of course is really good and I was building towards a Garden Angel um, Jin goes for a full crit build and into a mortal reminder that, that build for Jin is okay there are very many variations to build Jin that that's an okay one Akali goes for a standard build with the gunblade although most Akalis don't actually build gunblade but gunblade is still fine Shivana actually goes for a tank build which is really good because our team has no tank so this Shivana actually does really well by going for a tank build because that's what the team needs she does also take the most damage and do the most tower damage so she did play her role in the team uh, really well um, Seraphine goes from the Saras Embrace Ludens Echo build into the uh, Death Cap, which is alright. Galio uh, goes for Rod of Ages into Tank, which is pretty good considering he's, he he is the main tank of his team. So both uh, teams' tanks are building really well. Uh, Rengar goes for a full Assassin build. I love that. I love this Rengar's build. Um, 
Camille's standard uh, Triforce into Steric's Gage build, then Force of Nature, uh, probably to counter Akali and Seraphine, as well as my mixed damage. So that's good itemization uh, from the Camille. Zaya uh, goes for the Infinity Edge um, into uh, Runan's Hurricane. As I said, don't like Runan's Hurricane. I uh, can refer to the uh, Zaya Complete Guide for you know more tips on Zaya as well as the Zaya build. And uh, uh, Ari. Pretty alright build, uh, nothing uh, too much to discuss there. So now I'm just going, just going to take a quick look at the numbers before wrapping up. Alright, so quickly now, just taking a look at the numbers. As you guys can see, I did 33k damage. Jin did 11k. Uh, not because his build was bad or anything, it's just because he dies at the start of every fight. So he has literally no time to uh, output any damage, he just dies instantly. Uh, Akali did, uh, and Shivana as well as Seraphim. Basically, the whole team did a lot of damage as well. And Shivana really tanking a lot of damage for the team. But uh, Jin just being generally the most useless in the team. Uh, on the side of the enemy team, nothing too much to, to note. Although I would say that Ari did hit a couple of good chumps, especially two in the early game on me to um, give me two deaths and uh, does deal quite a decent amount of damage as well. Zaya plays, uh, I don't know how well Zaya plays to be really honest because I barely interact with the Zaya except for the shutdown on her. If you realize the entire game, I barely uh, interacted with the Zaya. I'm mainly interacting with the rest of her team, but she does deal quite a decent amount of damage and takes a ton of damage as well. So I would assume that she, uh, she was uh, trying to, her best to carry her team. But um, with all that out of the way, thanks for watching the video guys and goodbye.